Hello and welcome. I think we're now to episode six of Packet Tuesday. And today I'll finally get back to TLS and do what I promised originally last week, but then that neat uh, ping vulnerability came in and got me distracted. So today we'll look at the server hello uh, TLS message. Before we do that, uh, let's uh, first acquire uh, some traffic. So let me go here uh, to my uh, Mac and a uh, little trick I'm uh, going to do here. Uh, I'm going to uh, use an environment variable, SL keylog file. And I'm going to set this here uh, to my home directory. Let's put it on the desktop so we see it happening. Okay. What this does is I'll use Google Chrome in order to uh, connect to a website. Google Chrome uses for its TLS implementation the NSS SSL library. Fairly common library in particular uh, for clients. And if it sees that environment variable, it will log the symmetric encryption keys, the master keys uh, to this file. So this then allows Wireshark, who understands that file format, to uh, decrypt the data for us. Um, Well-known trick, um, nothing really new or uh, not a vulnerability and such, but um, I find it uh, helpful here in this case to do that. So anyway, let's start TCP dump and I should still have TCP dump here in my history. Uh, deviating from what I told you in earlier episodes, I'm actually doing some filtering here. Uh, just because I tend to talk while we acquire and uh, I want to keep the traffic a little bit down here, uh, keep it a little bit easier. And then we start uh, Google Chrome. Uh, this is sort of here on my Mac, so that's why I use this open. Uh, I have to start Google Chrome from the command line here, so it does see, or the NSS as a library, sees that environment variable. Okay, Google Chrome is coming up, and you see already here that SL keylog file starts showing up here. We are here at the uh, Google uh, website. Now, let's go to a better website. Okay, so here we have the ISC website. That should be all we need. So let's exit Chrome. Let's get our packet capture in the foreground and stop it. And um, then let's uh, open uh, the packet capture here. Okay, so here we have our um, um, TLS traffic. Now, let me find the session where we actually went uh, to ISC. And I'm using here as filter frame contains isc.sans.edu. Uh, the reason this works is because remember how the client hello has that server name indication. So it has the server name we connect to in the clear. So we can simply uh, find it like this. Okay, so this is now our TCP session. Let me just uh, follow the TCP stream here. Uh, ASCII parties are not really that interesting. Uh, so TCP stream 11 appears to be uh, what we got here. And so that's our TCP stream and you see the client hello here is already uh, highlighted. And uh, then next we do have uh, the server hello. So this is our server hello here. Notice how it has three different messages. It has the actual server hello in the packet, then it has the change cipher spec, and then it has some application uh, data in uh, this packet. Uh, so, okay, now let's take a look at what this actually uh, looks like here. So first, uh, our handshake server hello. Handshake, that's again 22. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, and then in the length here is only 122 bytes. We are using TLS version 1.2. The version indicated here is uh, the smaller version among those advertised by the client and the one supported by the server. Again, to keep a little bit uh, sort of no backwards compatibility here as we uh, like to have in uh, TLS. Okay, then you have our server hello message here. So now it's server hello is two. So 22 was the handshake. Then the hello is two. This again has a length of 118. You see we sort of needed four bytes for uh, the type and such. Then we have our version here again, 1.2. 
we have a random data. This random data must not be related to the random data sent by the client. So we basically try to get as much sort of raw random data as possible. Part comes from the client. We had a similar string from the client. And then we also had a string from uh, the server here. And then we have our session ID. The session ID may match the one we had from the client. Let's see, uh, EA Bravo, like Echo Alpha Bravo 24. Let's see what we got here in the client, you know, Echo Bravo. So we got the same uh, session ID here uh, in the client. Uh, this would allow us also to sort of resume sessions that we recently opened. Uh, that sort of you know, can help in making this uh, handshake uh, more efficient. Now the Cypher suite. That's the cipher suite that the server picked among those ciphers that the client offered. So in the end, the server here makes a decision which cipher to use. And when you configure your server, you can sort of you know, define the order in which they should be used. No compression. Again, yeah, compression here is uh, zero. And uh, then we do have our extensions. So uh, the extensions are again here. Uh, uh, let's expand them. Yeah. So we first have our supported versions, TLS 1.3. So this is basically where we decide, okay, we do want to do TLS 1.3. Then we have another extension here, a key share extension. Uh, this is part of uh, Diffie-Hellman. So uh, if you're using Diffie-Hellman uh, key exchange here, which means that the actual key is never uh, exchanged as part of the handshake, but you know, these derivatives of the key material are being exchanged, and that's the key share part here. So both client and server are sending that uh, key share extension, but then both have you know, their part, their secret part on their end that's then being used uh, to create the actual key. So anyway, that's sort of our client hello. You see again here the JA3, that's this library that allows us to do TLS fingerprinting. JA3S is just that this is for the server part of it and they use the client hello message. But then again, yeah, we do have a couple of more uh, messages here. So we do have our change cipher spec message. That's just where we now switch to TLS 1.2. And um, then we do have the part of the application layer protocol. So part of TLS 1.3 also allows us uh, to negotiate some of these application uh, layer details as part of the client hello, server hello. Uh, you saw that uh, in the client hello where we basically said, okay, you know, we, we are supporting HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2. And then, you know, later, the server has to tell us what to use. But here we are running into this problem that the data is encrypted already. So um, let's load the key file here. Wireshark, preferences, protocols, TLS. I think I just called it SL key file, not key log file. Key log file is what I called it last time. So, okay, let's load that. May not have worked. Let me double check the file name. I should probably just do the browse here. Okay, yeah, that looks better. Looks better, you saw how all of a sudden here stuff turned green. You know, that's basically where we uh, then have uh, some application layer data uh, being exposed. And uh, here, the server hello. Let's see what we got here. And I'm diving in here and now this is uh, decrypted. Mm -hmm. So we have these encrypted extensions, no longer encrypted. Uh, we have 13 bytes of them. The server name, again, that just is, we are supporting uh, that feature. 
And there's no server name ready to communicate here. That's done by the client. And then here, the protocol, we are going to use HTTP version two now. So this is our server hello that we have here. Where's the certificate? Well, the certificate is coming later. And let's just take a quick look at the certificate here. So here's our certificate. Let's go up here and certificate is pretty long. No, 4,689 bytes. And you see there are a couple packets here involved. Wireshark is nice enough to sort of combine them all here, like reassemble TCP for us here. And, um, and then uh, let's dive into this here a little bit. So first, oops, sorry, up here, our certificate. Here's the actual certificate. That certificate, of course, is pretty big. We have our actual signed certificate. Then what algorithm was used with it. Uh, then we do have the status request. Remember, there was sort of an option like this in the client hello, where I told you, well, it's there, so the, the server knows that we are supporting uh, these OCSP messages. But uh, OCSP based the online certificate status protocol, and um, here it tells us that uh, well, the responses have to dive all the way in here. The certificate is good. And this message comes from the certificate authority. The server just went out for us and collected it for us and appended it here to the certificate. So that way we, the client, don't have to do this ourselves. Note how it looks like it's 12 hours. So that's how long uh, this uh, message is good for. So at least every 12 hours, the server has to go to the OCSP service and uh, request a new assertion that the certificate is still good. And it's signed by the sort of authority. So that way, you know, uh, the server can't tamper with this uh, because uh, you know, we, we, want, we want this message to verify if the certificate that the server gave us is still good. If the server did not include that message, then we would have to go out by ourselves. And if you look a little bit into the certificate here at the extensions. There are a couple things here. Let me see a couple of the interesting things. So here's a revocation list. That's the other thing, how this is being uh, verified that you know, we could retrieve that certificate revocation list. That's a list of all the certificates that are included in, that are revoked by that certificate authority. Mm -hmm. And here you see the sort of a location list. You see they have a separate one here for 2022 quarter four. Uh, one problem with those certificate sort of location lists is, well, scaling and that uh, they can get very large. So um, certain authorities tend to have multiple uh, lists uh, like that. And uh, then let me find the... Yep, here's our OCSP. This is where we find the OCSP, the Online Certificate Status Protocol API. So this is where we would send the message to if it would not be included. And these URLs are part of the signed certificate, so an attacker can't modify that data and cannot just uh, remove uh, that data uh, from the certificate. Couple other things here. You see these timestamps from various so certificate authorities, that's what it looks like. There is a relatively modern feature uh, with uh, certificates called uh, certificate transparency. In order to prevent certificate authorities from issuing certificates without telling anybody about it, they have to maintain the certificate transparency logs. They're again, cryptographically signed. And um, these timestamps, basically, they came back, these assigned timestamps stamps from these certificate transparency logs telling us, you know, when was that certificate added to these logs. So uh, then we could go back and check if it's actually there. Uh, but uh, this basically also indicates that this set of authority complies with those rules. Otherwise, they would not be included in um, 
browsers as a trusted certificate authority. So anyway, yeah, this is pretty much it. That's sort of the interesting part here. And um, then again, yeah, we have additional messages here. That's again the other feature where we do have you know more than one sort of message uh, mixed in with uh, with one uh, packet. But anyway, so, so that's what I want to tell you here. It's uh, just a simple certificate, uh, sorry, TLS uh, hello message uh, that we had here. Uh, nothing special, nothing too fancy, no exploit today. Uh, of course, there are lots and lots of exploits around uh, these um, handshakes and such. Downgrade exploit I mentioned uh, two weeks ago, how some of them are being avoided by, you know, for example, using a hash of the client hello as part of the key. So an attacker uh, can't necessarily uh, mess uh, with the client hello uh, to cause uh, to cause down crates in, in the encryption algorithms or the TLS version and such uh, that is uh, being used. TLS 1.3 also has like you know, that real neat sort of session resumption uh, feature, which maybe we'll cover in a follow-up uh, packet you stay. The specialty here is that uh, you can sort of do your TCP and your TLS handshake at the same time. You already kind of saw here how we do some of the application like the HTTP 2 versus HTTP 1.1 uh, handshake as part of TLS. Uh, when we then combine this with TCP, we have this real great feature where we have TCP, TLS, and kind of that HTTP handshake happening sort of at the same time, you know, all in like, you know, two packets essentially. And that's sort of one reason why TLS connections these days actually sometimes appear almost faster because um, you need that TCP handshake uh, for uh, TLS and non-TLS. So uh, with uh, TLS, we can combine all these handshakes. We can do HTTP2, which you can't really do with uh, without TLS. And... Um, that sort of makes TLS actually a little bit faster these days than a non-TLS connection to a web server. Anyway, that's all I have for today. So thanks again for listening and uh, spread the word. You know, let others know uh, that you like this. Let me know uh, how to improve uh, these uh, podcasts, or not podcasts, but uh, Packet Tuesdays. And uh, well, uh, talk to you again uh, next uh, Tuesday. Thanks.